Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Love Battle High School from Japan Anime Games. It's for two to four players, take about 30 to 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 plus. And in Love Battle High School, you're going to be taking control of both the hero of the school, this guy right here, who everybody wants to get it on with, or you're going to be moving around, uh, and I should say, you're going to be moving around the five lovely ladies who all, for some reason, want to get it on with the hero of our story, whose name is Hero, I guess. And uh, this is a game in which you're going to be moving them around and trying to manipulate how much or how little uh, the ladies like the dude because at the beginning of the game, you're going to pick which one of the ladies you think is going to win the heart of the dude and go on a date with him at the end of the game. Also, along the way, you're going to be gaining oh-so-valuable key, a.k.a. victory points, by moving things around, taking different actions, playing down different cards, and doing a variety of different things. It's pretty light, pretty simple, but is it pretty good? Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Love Battle High School. So first and foremost, we have a handy-dandy rule booklet. It is 12 pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and it's well done. It should have you up and running pretty smoothly. That being said, you are going to want to keep it nearby. And the big reason why is because there's lots and lots of different rooms in this game that will let you take different actions, but... Uh, it's sometimes really difficult to read those actions depending on where you were sitting at the table and the player aid card is completely useless when it comes to helping you with those particular actions. So you are going to want to keep the rule booklet nearby and, uh, and just kind of study what the different rooms are, especially when you're first learning the game. So in Love Battle High School, what's happening is you are going to be taking control of both the hero, this dude right here, and the five lovely ladies, Rin, Katsumi, Yuki, Sekiro, and whatever her name is. It's upside down. She's a hot chick like everyone else in Japan games and what you're trying to do is at the beginning of the game you're going to look at cards you're going to have five cards in your hand you're going to look and try and figure out which one of these five lovely ladies or potentially two of them are going to end up with the hero right here and you're going to pick them uh, by looking at the token and saying, you know what, I think uh, Katsumi, because in real life, whew, redheads, yeah, redheads, all my redheads, uh, I think she would win. She's going to be highest on the love track, so I would secretly put that into the bag. Everyone would secretly put either one or two tokens into the bag. You're going to lock the bag up until the end of the game, and then you're ready to start the game. So what you're going to do in this game is you're going to be moving the ladies around and moving the dude around, trying to get them in particular positions so that you can activate different abilities that are in all the different rooms, uh, use different cards that you will have, and you'll use cards in one of two ways, either to use the ability on the card or use them to move the ladies on the back of the card. And the ultimate goal is to get what is called Kai. K-I. I don't know if it's Ki, Kai, whatever you want to call it to get the most Kai by the end of the game. Whoever has the most Kai after uh, this number of periods is going to be the winner of the game. Also, you will get a big bump at the end of the game if you're able to successfully guess at the beginning of the game which of the ladies is most likely to end up with the dude. So how does it all work? Let's go over the components, then we'll get into the gameplay. So first component-wise, I'm not going to show them to you again, but you have all five of the different kinds of cards up there. You want to make sure you have room for a discard pile as well. Uh, each of the cards... Are, are their cards and they will do various different things there's five main types of cards in the game uh enchantment punishment uh flirting and uh two other ones jealousy which is like kind of a reactionary card and i'm not going to go too in detail about what the cards do but for the most part they're either going to bump up your love they're going to allow you to draw uh kai which, uh, which are the victory points, obviously, or they're going to allow you to mess with other people's love or move people around or do a variety of different things that you would expect from a game like this. So now I'm going to get, zoom it down and we'll start going over some of the different rooms and how all that works and how your turn structure works. So... Uh, another thing you'll notice are plot point cards right here. And these are a different way that you're going to be able to earn Kai in addition to playing cards or, uh, you know... Uh, getting the, the hero to fall in love with your character. And essentially, if you reach that criteria on your turn, you're just able to claim one of these cards. So play a card in three or more rooms in one turn, which is actually kind of difficult. You have to hoard up some cards. Remove the hero's condition, replacing it does not count because the hero can get certain ailments like uh, awkward boners and uh, they're, they're like a disembodied spirit, various different stuff like that that will come into play, mostly once again through cards or from going to particular rooms. 
Over here, we also have what are called meddling cards, which at the beginning of each period, except for the first period, you're going to deal with one of these meddling cards. And pretty much the meddling cards are like events. So for instance, move the hero to the nurse's office, eliminate current condition, if any. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Just random stuff everyone's going to have to deal with. Counselor, in player order, each player picks one plot point on the board to either save or replace. No two players may select the same plot point. You get, you get the idea. But let's get to the actual meat and potatoes of the game, which is your turn. And you're going to take turns, taking turns. And on your turn, you're going to do a lady action and a dude action. You can do the dude action first before the lady action or the lady action first. It's a kind of willy-nilly on which way you want to do it. And how it works is uh, the girl phrase is pretty simple. What you're going to do is you're going to be able to draw one card from one of the girls. So let's just say I like Katsumi. I put Katsumi in the bag, so having her cards is really going to be useful. And then you move girls or play cards until you are done. And how this works is if you want to move a girl, you can only move her one space at a time. Now, luckily, there's this huge hallway right here, uh, which pretty much is in the middle of nearly everything. Uh, if you want to go anywhere, you have to go through the hallway. Now, for some reason, maybe because they've seduced the hall monitors, not quite sure how it works, uh, the ladies can go through the hallway and that's not a move. So I can essentially go from here to here or from here to here, and that is only one move. And as you can see, the doorways kind of separate everything. But in order to move one of the ladies, I have to discard a card. So if I wanted to move uh, Yuki right here, which is the blue-haired one, I would have to discard one of her cards like so... And then I could move her over here into art because maybe I had plans to get Katsumi and Yuki and the hero all in the art class because then I'll have this awesome play on one of my cards or something like that. The other thing you can do, aside from that, and you can do this as much as I want, I could move all these different characters and just spend all my cards if I wanted to. It'd probably be a pretty terrible idea, gameplay-wise, but I could do it. The other thing you can do is you can utilize the abilities on the card. So, for instance, let's see if any of these cards would actually make sense for me to... Uh, uh, so I have flirting, minus one love to all the girls in the room, plus one, uh, so that pff, not really going to help. Uh, these ones are going to give me love, that one's going to give me Kai. Could I play my, is that card going to help? Play in response to a non-jealousy card, play, so the jealousies are reactionary cards. Enchantment, pay one Kai to play this card, plus four love. If alone with the hero, draw two cards as well. And the other thing I want to mention is that most of the time, if you're going to play cards, you do have to play cards with the hero in the room with you. Now, there are definitely some exceptions here or there, and sometimes some of the cards will move the hero, but for the most part, you need to be in the room with the hero in order to play your cards. Which is a good time to tell you about uh, how each of the different characters has their own unique special ability, each of the different ladies does. So, for instance, Rin, uh, Rin decides that the primary love value from punishment card is plus or minus, so there's these punishment cards uh, where you can... So, for instance, this one... Uh, I could make this plus or minus. Uh, Katsumi, uh, she can play seduction cards with other girls in the same room. Normally, you can only play seduction cards as if you were the only person there, but she's all right if everybody's watching, which, yeah, I like Katsumi even better. Yuki, you can play jealousy cards even if she's not in the same room. Sekiro, Sekiro can give you plus one for flirting instead of minus one to one girl. And then Aki, Eika, Eika does not have to play uh, Iki to play enchantment cards. Uh, pay Iki, because Ki... Wow, I can't read. So normally when you have these special cards, it's going to cost you one. I don't have any right here, I don't believe. Uh, it costs you one key, aka victory points, in order to play the cards. But normally they're pretty good cards. But she can negate that, which is a good reason to have her cards. So now, let's pretend we're done with the girl phase, and we'll go with the hero phase. And once again, if I want to do the hero phase first, and then do the girl phase, I could. So the hero phase is, first thing, you're going to move up to two spaces. And you can do this in either order. You can either activate a room, or... Uh, you can move two spaces, or you could move two spaces in an activator room. But you get to move two spaces, and he does have to use the hallway. So if he wanted to go here, he could go one, uh, two. So he could do that. Perfectly legal. And then you get to take one action. The actions are either to draw a girl card into your hand, uh, kick one girl out of a room, so I could uh, just, hey, so get out of here. I want to be here alone with Katsumi. Or take the room action. And therein lies the biggest element of the game, which I haven't even really gotten to, uh, which is that each of these different little text boxes that you see on the board are different actions that you're going to be able to take. So for instance, I'm in art. If I wanted to do this, test, roll a die. Uh, one, you made me look fat, minus one key. Two, what is that supposed to be? Discard two girl cards. So one and two are bad. Three, where are my boobs? Minus one love to one girl in the room, which actually in this case would be great because I could knock down uh, Yuki because I don't like Yuki. Or plus four, my boobs look great. Plus two love to one girl in the room, which would be great because it's Katsumi. Uh, or six, 
get one plus one key. So this is a great action to take right now. I roll the dice. I got a five. You have skills. Draw two girl cards. And I would just draw two Katsumi cards. At which point, pretty much everybody knows I'm going for Katsumi. Now, you can bluff in the game. Uh, it mentions the rules that you might want to try it. But it can definitely backfire. Like right now, people look at my hand. They're like, oh yeah, he's got Katsumi. They're going to try and plot against me. But it really is what it is. Uh, so that would be the end of my turn. Everybody else would take their turn, and then we get to the second period. Once everybody's done their thing, moved around girls, moved around the dude, taking different actions, you'd move on to second period. You started off by drawing a meddling card, dealing with that, and then you rinse, wash, and repeat. But I will go over some of the different spaces on the board before I get you to my thoughts on the game. Uh, so over here we have the pool, and a lot of them are going to have you rolling the dice. Uh, one, hold your breath too long, minus one. Two to five, enlightening angle, so you see something sexy at the pool, plus one key. Six, swimsuit malfunction, plus two key, and gain either the awkward boner or the spontaneous nosebleed, nosebleed condition. Because as I mentioned, there were some conditions that uh, will impact him. Awkward bona, boner, giant headlamp, dumbfounded stare, disembodied spirit, spontaneous nosebleed. And they will come with both a pro and a con when you have those out. If you want to cure that... Uh, you have to go to the nurses, or I think there's some cards that will do it as well, and they'll replace them. Uh, office, impersonate the principal, move any one girl to the office. The gym, roll the dice, face plant, minus one love to every girl in the room. Two to five, not bad, plus one love to the girl in the room at your choice. Six, plus one love to every girl in the room. Uh, there's the, of course, there's the occult studies, because the, every high school has that. Spend one key to draw two girl cards, or discard two girl cards to gain one key. A good way to get key easily. History. Draw one non-enchantment card from the top of any girl's discard pile. And enchantment cards are just like these fancy cards, uh, that they, they look slightly different. Let's see if I can find one. No. But they're in there. Uh, but anywho, you're going to continue to do this until you get to date. Whatever the heck that means. I think you're going on a date. You're going to go on a date with the girl that has the highest heart number on it. If you were able to successfully guess that at the beginning of the game, then you're going to get yourself five points. Uh, if you're able to successfully put two people in the bag, because as I mentioned, you could hopefully put two in the bag, uh, if they happen to both be the number one and the number two, then you would be correct about that. And at that point, then you would get eight bonus points. But that is very high risk, high reward. Also, you're playing two players, then you have to do uh, two into the bag. But anywho, after that, you're going to count up how much Kai you have. And whoever has the most Kai is going to be the winner of Love Battle High School. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Love Battle High School from Japan Anime Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go with the pros, let's go with the cons. Before we get started, I'm gonna I'm gonna format this review slightly different. I'm gonna get right down to the point, which I don't normally do. And that is, I want to tell you that I was not the biggest fan of this game. And full disclosure, I only played this game one and a half times. Normally I try to play games three times, but it, it was just not a game for me. I was not feeling the game, and it's not because of the source material, as I'll say in a second. But I want to cut to the chase and tell you that if you don't play many games, like if you're not a big gamer, and this theme interests you, I think you will like this game. And I want to cut right to that, because the theme of the game comes across well. And if so if you're into this game because of the theme, if you're into this style of anime, then and you don't play many games, and that's a huge uh, caveat as well, I think you are going to enjoy the game. And I definitely can recommend you check out the game, or potentially even buy the game. Uh, but let's get back to the pros and the cons. So starting on the con side... First and foremost, two to four players, <clears throat> restricted player count. Uh, also, I didn't get a chance to play it at two players, but I think it would definitely be best at the higher player count. But that being said, when you get to four players, it really does highlight one of the biggest issues that I have with the game, which is that there's only five ladies there. And let's just happen to say, because you like redheads, you pick Katsumi, and I pick Katsumi, and then the other two people playing pick Yuki, and then they pick Rin. Well, you and I immediately have an advantage because we have two people working towards a common goal. And we don't even know that we're working towards the common goal yet. So the game definitely feels slightly imbalanced in that aspect where if two or three people, God forbid, happen to pick the same character, then this person is not probably going to win. Now, you can gain key in various different ways by going to different spots, uh, by having lucky rolls, or by collecting the different plot points, but it's still going to be an incredibly difficult uphill battle just because you picked picked incorrectly, essentially at the beginning of the game, based on very limited knowledge. Because you do get to look at your five cards you have in your hand, and you can say, all right, I can do this, and I can do that, and that's cool. But that's still not that much. So that's one of my biggest issues that I have with the game. Uh, another comment I have with the game is that, while I do like the artwork and I do like the graphic design, I like how the school looks. I think it looks really cool. There's just too much dang text on this board. And 
the text is not like super small like it's, it's not as big as i would like it to be but when you're looking at it from an odd angle it makes it really hard to read all the different rooms so let me count there's one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm counting 14 big rooms in there, including the hallways and the entryway, that have text. And if I'm looking at it upside down from right here, like, I cannot read anything. Like, I am I am an arm's length from the board right now. It's upside down. I can not read a dang thing on the board. And the same way as if you're looking at it from the side. So you have to be really close to the board and ideally in front of the board because there's a lot of text on some of these spots, which is a really sore spot for this game. So if you're going to get this game, I would recommend maybe printing out your own player aid card, which just lists all the different rooms and what they do. And, and everybody I played it with agreed that that was something that they should have done. That being said, you'd need a much larger player aid card because a lot of these have a lot of text on them. Uh, another comment over the game is some of the plot points, they're really stinking hard to accomplish. And some of them are just like stupid easy. It's just like, oh, I just kind of lucked into this one. Whereas some of it's like, there's tons of forward planning. And that's another con with, that I have with this game. And one of the main reasons why I personally don't like this game is it just felt like i was wandering around randomly rolling dice and randomly doing stuff just what do i do on my turn uh, i'm gonna move here here i'm gonna do this that gets me plus one kai and plus one love cool and then i'm gonna randomly just move the guy here and roll the dice and all bad stuff happens uh, and that's my biggest thing it's just there's too much randomness with all of the dice rolling now that being said if you're not that big of a gamer then that that, that might not turn you off at all and that's why I wanted to emphasize at the beginning that if you like the theme, and if you don't play that many games, I think this is a game that you can definitely enjoy. But if you do play a lot of games, I think you're going to be like, uh, way too random. That being said, you can do forward planning with your cards, and you can set up some awesome tricks, but the, the, the ladies are just moving around so much because everybody moves them around pretty much, and meddling events move them around, and the hero's moving around so much, and it, it just it didn't felt like I had any control at all. Now, maybe in a two-player game you have more control, but still, I just... Uh, I don't know. Maybe actually it would be better as a two-player game. I didn't get a chance to play it, and I'll be brutally honest with you, I have no desire to play it again. Um... Any other cons that I have with the game? Oh, it was kind of annoying. Uh, I wish they would have better better made it obvious which girl was which because some of the girls look somewhat alike maybe kin and Katsumi. if you're looking at it from the different angles the blue haired girl uh the pink haired girl i wish they would have made all of their hair like bright colored like their cards i think that would have been a, a welcome addition which they kind of did but they didn't completely or maybe just put the bases as the color of the cards or something like that i don't know just a better way because like, as I said, if you're not super close to the board, it's kind of hard to see what's going on in the board, which is a pretty dang big problem. Any kind of other cons over the game? The box is way, 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 three, I want to go for five, way, way too big. Like it's ridiculously big. Like once you put everything away, you're like, what the hell? I could fit almost four copies of this game, maybe five copies of this game in this box. Like the box inserts nice. But it's like, are you planning for 15 expansions? Because that's the only reason why I can see why this box is so obnoxiously large. But, you know, that's more of a nitpick than anything. Any other cons that I have with the game? No. No, not really. Moving on to the pros. I didn't like the game that much. It's not a game for me. But, I'll, I'll put it like this. I played this game with... I played a four-player and a three-player... I played it with five other people, and nobody thought it was a bad game. Like, that's that's the big thing. Nobody was like, man, this game is just hot garbage. It's a pile of crap. Nobody did that. Nobody was particularly smit with the game. We had one person who was like, yeah, I kind of liked it. But other than that, it was like, no, no, not really. Not really for me. And it's not the theme. Like, I want to emphasize that, that it's not the theme. I thought the theme comes across well. And that's one of the biggest pros that I have, is that thematically nearly everything in the game works pretty well like the cards they make sense the rooms for the most part they make sense the, there is some humor in the game and i laughed a good deal about this game uh the game is a sexy game i want to mention that that everybody like I, like it got me going a little bit this is not my particular cup of tea watching the whole animated ladies thing but i was like hey if i was going to this would be the kind of anime i'd want to watch them doing it so if you're looking at it from the sexy factor or the thematic factor it works well but I just could not get around how much how I could not get around how random it was and how little forward planning there was. And it just felt like I was just randomly moving stuff and randomly rolling dice and randomly playing cards every once in a while that were good for me or they were bad for me. And but yeah, but we're on the pros here. 
Uh, so I like the artwork. The rule booklet's well done. They do give you a player aid card, which is good, but it should have been it should have had all the things listed on it, all the different rooms listed on it. There's a good variety of meddling cards, and they'll do different things. They'll be moving people around, getting everybody to the gym because you got a speaker, or maybe it'll cure like the guy and send them to the nurse's office, or maybe it'll be in the pool. Various different things, and it'll move the board around, which is good, but it also adds to that randomness factor that I wasn't enjoying. Uh, the component-wise, the components are perfectly serviceable. I like the cards. I like the text on the cards as well. And I think you really are going to get more out of the game if you read all the text on the cards. So I'm just going to read some of it because you might get a chuckle. Uh, so, flirting, true love could be right in front of you. Giant hammer from out of nowhere. Punishment. Ugh, how shameless. Seduction. Nobody knows you like I do. You're the only one who gets me. They don't understand you. I don't think so. Make my dreams real. She's not your type. You're what? Okay, she's boring. Let's get to Katsubi, my favorite uh want to see a trick aren't my legs strong and smooth just concentrate on these all capitals help me pull these knee socks up help me put this lotion on you're wearing that so i guess she's a little bit more of a promiscuous which is definitely what i go for care to test your stamina i'm too hot to handle this isn't revealing is it get a life up for some figure drawing do you like my new swimsuit oh no we're trapped together in the closet as she pulls off in the top um so yeah the theme comes across but in the end i think i've said pretty much everything i have to say for it is it a game for me no i'm not going to keep the game i have no desire to ever play the game ever again nobody i played it with was really that hot on the game but i feel like they went for a very specific niche with this game which makes sense because it's a very specific niche the theme of this game as it is and if you are that niche and you're not a, a generally a board gamer if you don't know what mechanisms are, then I think you're going to enjoy this game. And I don't want to like sound like I'm talking down or condescending. It's just when you get it, first get into the hobby, there's games you generally like better than other games. And as you progress through the hobby, you say, oh, man, these mechanisms are cool. Or I really like deck building. Or I really like drafting. Or I really like action selection. You kind of gravitate away towards games from this. At least, I think, for most people. And I could be wrong. And let me know in the comments below if I am wrong. So, there you go. That's Love Battle High School. If it looks like it might be your cup of tea and you don't typically play too many games, definitely give this one a whirl. For everybody else, probably going to have to give it a pass, though. If you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel, click on the Amazon Associates link down below. Buy anything on Amazon. Throw a couple pennies my way. Really does help support the channel. And in the comments below, let me know. Have you played Love Battle High School? What did you think of the game? Also, have you ever watched any of the anime? Me personally, uh, no, I have not. But if I were going to watch some sexy anime, I think this would be it. But then again, I think I just want, I think I just want nudity. You know, I think I would just go uh, with the, um, well, this is, this, this review has taken a turn. You know what? We're going to, we're going to turn this the other way and say penguins. Are they in your top half of favorite animals? So here's your top half favorite animals. Here's your bottom half favorite animals. Where are penguins? Me personally, definitely in the top half, but you're still thinking about Katsumi and oh my gosh, Katsumi is hot. I just got a thing for red hair.